Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to tonight's little stream, um, where I'm very fortunate and very privileged to have been given um, early access to the latest map by Stevie, the Lakeland Vale 2 map that he's currently working on to do some um, testing, basically, to do some bug finding and check to make sure there's no issues on the map with things and fight if there is any problems make sure obviously to notify him so he can get them all fixed before the map is released to the public in the not too distant future so i'm going to be jumping in having a first look at the map and then um uh from there i'm going to be doing a bit of farming on the map just to test how things are working and what's kind of new on this map that we haven't seen on the previous maps from Stevie and on the Lakeland Vale 1 map as I'm guessing we should call it now, the one I'm doing my current YouTube series on. So let's hop into the map and see what it's all about. Start? Yes. Course play. I've added course play for the simple reason might be useful to have course play to be able to have loads of things running about plus stevie wants to test the map map tested with course play to make sure course play doesn't have any issues with cell points um crashing into objects that sort of thing and it can access everything okay so i might be testing it with course play um, i'm gonna just quickly go into my option game options and do the normal stuff um Default fuel usage, turn off all the buying things because buying is rubbish. I'm going to turn all the settings on. I'm going to be testing weeds on the map. I'm not using seasons. Um, I don't know if Stevie wanted the map testing with Steve uh, seasons. He didn't tell me specifically that he wanted the map testing with seasons. And to be honest, I really wouldn't want to test it with seasons because I honestly, I find Seasons has too many bugs in it. Seasons has too many bugs in it, and I wouldn't want to um, incorrectly say that the something's not working on the map when it's actually a conflict with Seasons. That's also another reason why I'm not using and have not installed a lot of mods. This map is pretty much installed in its own folder, away from everything else farming sim related on my computer. So hopefully there is no interference from and conflicts. Any problems I run into should be with the map, <laughs> you know, and not conflicts caused by other mods. So if I do run into any issues, then I need to report them to Stevie because they're probably most likely going to be map issues that he needs to fix. So anyway, we've got the starting farmhouse over here. Uh, got a lovely little sauna placeable thing. Uh, let me quickly do my enable depth of field false thing because I, I want to turn off the blurry. Um, I'm not using my normal lighting mod. I've not made any edits to this map. I've not gone in and looked at the map files in any way, shape or form. I'm not doing anything like that. This is purely the map as Stevie has sent it to me and load it up and see how it all, all fares. So we've got your house over here at the uh, at the um, main farm that you start with in new farmer mode. In farm manager and start from scratch, I believe the buildings are here, including the farmhouse. Although I do also believe this time round the farmhouse is under, I think it's, is it a decoration? It's under a decorative object, although apparently we don't have one. There's a little, um, American farmhouse that comes with the map, which is interesting. But under actual farmhouses, there's no placeable farmhouse. So that farmhouse is actually baked into the map. So that will always be here. However, should you choose to start in Farm Manager or start from scratch and want to build somewhere else on the map, Stevie does provide you with a farmhouse. 
an American themed one um, that you can place. Um, over here, I'm going to start over here because I'm going to basically work towards the, the west edge of the map and work back. Uh, you've got your cow pen over here for your cows. Um, and again, animal pen extension is installed and configured in the map. So animal pen extension is here and works. He says. for the point where I fill up the water. Over here this time. Oh, I guess the cows go all the way around this area then. They, um, bit of a U shape this time. So the water trough for the cows is over here. Uh, straw point is over here for blowing your straw. Uh, your manure pit and slurry pit are here. Conveniently placed right next to your manure slurry and digestate storage building. Um, obviously, the big difference between this map and the Lakeland Vale map that I'm currently playing on is that the pigs have been separated away from the main farm. So the cow pen that is placed and baked again, all these animal pens are baked into the map. They are not user placeable. If you start in Farm Manager or start from scratch, they are fixed in these places and you will need to buy the land to use them. But the cow um, pigs are no longer with the cows at the main farm. Um, the chickens are at the main farm and I will show you the chicken pen, which again is a free range pen. The chickens will wander about. You've got your... Um, windmill water tower right here for refilling your vehicles and stuff you can buy that placeable in the store that is a buyable placeable by stevie you can buy it and place it wherever you want wherever you need to fill water on the map you can buy one of those a little word of advice i will give to people though is maybe look at going in and tweaking the fill rate on that because it can be a little bit slow all the water fill points, and this is a thing in in the game as a whole, general rule, it's not a Stevie thing, but a lot of the water fill points on maps are very, very slow to fill. And it takes ages to fill big tankers. But like you say, your chickens are over here, located next to the farm supply purchase point where you can obviously buy seeds, fertilizers, limes, all that sort of stuff. You can buy it here. From this lovely little building uh, there are two versions available in the map this is the one that basically you get at the farm um, however you can buy one that looks a little bit more industrial if you wanted to actually place it away from the farm and have it as a sort of point on the map where you go and buy all your stuff to bring back to the farm if you want to role play like that um, obviously in my Lakeland Vale playthrough I, I did sell this building I got rid of it um, I sold it off and I put a wool storage um, thing in its place instead on the original map uh, and then obviously other global company buildings and there's nothing to stop you doing that again on this map or if you wanted to because you've got one chicken pen you've got the free range chickens here already you might want to throw in a couple of other chicken pens however I will advise you right now when you go into the animal menus there are no modded animal pens. You've only got the vanilla giants ones available. So something I would maybe recommend if you want to play, if you like this map, is to download Stevie's um, Fenton Forest Animal Pack, which has all the animal pens from the Fenton Forest map, which you could then place like extra chicken pens and stuff on the map, which would be kind of cool. Uh, you've got your 
silo over here, which is a the two bin silo. Again, this map does come with two options of silos for you to basically place in farm manager or start from scratch. You've got the four bin silo setup, which anyone who's watched us playing on the Fenton Forest multiplayer server will recognize straight away. Um, this is the two bin one, which is the one obviously I've been using in my Lakeland Vale Let's Play series over on YouTube. Um, you've got your, your fuel, Stevie's fuel supply point here for refueling your vehicles and tractors and buying your fuel. If you you know you want to use that at the farm again, in Lakeland in my Let's Play series, I sold all that. I sold all the types of refill buildings like this, the buying buildings, and I tended I had build I instead put placeables that I actually had to manually fill up. So I would have to go and buy the fuel from somewhere else on the map, bring it back to the farm and store it. But you know everybody plays their own way. Some people like the convenience of having the refill points at the farm and again these are you can buy these these are a standalone placeable these are available in the store menu so you can buy these and add them to the map so again start from scratch farm manager mode you can place those uh, we then get over here we've got stevie's lovely um double wide vehicle sheds with doors now i don't have these on my lakeland vale let's play series because i never updated the map to the latest version this was something that stevie added in the, one of his last sort of um updates to the the main um lakeland vale map um also in here we have a i believe a cedar and it's a cedar, um cedar and planters the two the, the pronto we get on this map and the, the cedar we get on this map designated by the LK2 for Lakeland Vale 2 um, they are included with the map um, and part of the map because they plant the additional crops they plant the alfalfa and stuff that you can plant on this map and in fact both cedars planters do every single crop in the game you've got obviously an 18.2 meter planter um, and then you've got the little horse one um, both relatively quite quick as well at 22 kilometers per hour planting speed Stevie so has included those he's also got his bale wrapper because you can make silage um, silage bales on the map um, so he's included a wrapper that can make silage out of alfalfa alfalfa bales that's there as well i don't know if the in-game standard um most of the standard cedars will do looks like they will do the alfalfa that's fine planters as well perhaps not all the, the base game planters won't do alfalfa. Interesting. Nor will the, the optional fertilizing modded ones. So you will need a cedar to do those. Have I got two versions of that installed? Because I'm running the Horsh um, DLC, aren't I? Running the Horsh DLC. And then I've got the optional fertilizer version of the mod. So I could turn off the fertilizer and just have it as a big, big 15,000 litre capacity planter. Um, so that's there. Uh, but let's look at the baling technology then. See, the in game, ah, the in game wrapper, the cun one won't do um alfalfa interesting so yes you will need stevie's wrapper to do the alfalfa um I 
I don't know if the straw harvest add-ons will do um, alfalfa. Probably not. And obviously Stevie's added his own baler, his little round bale wrapper as well. Um... Obviously, I don't think the Arceus and things matter too much um, because they don't go then on. They just collect bales. They don't worry about the fill type too much. We'll have a quick look through the vehicles, see what we have added. Uh, the Cotty Multi-Tank by Stevie. Okay. So that does your homogenized long-life milk and everything. Um, and basically all the liquids and stuff that are on this map, I do believe. Animal transport. We haven't got any modded ones. We do have the updated art mechanic. Um, which apparently lets you transport chickens if you can, if the map supports buying and selling of chickens. I don't think there's anything else installed in any of these categories. I've not added any, like I say, not added any mods really because I don't want to interfere with the map too much. Um, and potentially risk conflicts. Have got an easy auto low trailer installed. Missing function low loader in L10 XL. So that mod's got an error in it. Not great. Long trailer, short, so you get two choices of lengths. You can have ramps, uh, gooseneck, bumper pull, if you want to attach it to your um, truck. And a gooseneck if you want to put it on the back of a um, normal trailer. I know a lot of people like this trailer. I did enjoy it previously in the past however it not it never got updated by the original mod author when the easy auto load script came out um, but somebody's done it apparently however there is a error there that they probably need to fix and like I say I'm not running anything apart from the official DLCs so there isn't going to be a lot in here Got the obviously Thunder trailer over there because obviously Thunder is quite useful to have on a map. I ought to probably edit that actually to give it the same sort of capacity as that one, but who, who knows? Uh, trailers, I don't think we get any fancy modded trailers apart from any that I've already added, which I haven't. Legal. Why is that one in there? I don't know where that. I don't know where that mod comes from. I'm not entirely sure. Obviously, got me favourite auger wagon, the J and M. Not running any modded combines or headers or anything on this map that I'm aware of. Mowers might be worth checking out though. For cutting of grass and things. No modded tedders. No modded wind rowers. Uh, fine. Harvesters. Look like they just do all the normal crops. Nothing fancy there. Forage harvesters, they will do alfalfa. That's nice to note. I haven't got any modded like beet harvesters and potato harvesters, so I probably won't be testing beet and stuff. Uh, animals, standard mixer, nothing special in the crop. 
thingy, uh, big M, so no fancy special mowers required. Uh, just got all the regular vehicles, nothing fancy or modded there. So, from that standpoint, a lot of the stuff is integrated very nicely into the map. You don't need any extra mods or things like that. And like I say, Stevie does get provide two um a seeder and planter that can plant all the crops within the map anyway. Um so you don't need to worry about comp uh, if you do have seeders or whatever that have got the um wrong configuration, which you could possibly run into if you download modded seeders, if you've downloaded a lot of modded seeders or planters, and the people who have made those mods have set them up where they've um, done the fruits as individual fruits on the cedar planter instead of using the um, fruit type categories so like um, in the cedar or planters XML it will say like seed fruit type category planter if it's a planter or sewing machine if it's a cedar you can make a cedar and planter do both by adding sewing machine planter putting both terms in there and then what those machines will do is they will read the fill types from the map and be able to seed and plant whatever the map offers however a lot of seed seeders and planters that you can download as mods what some modders tend to do they tend to do this slightly incorrect method of listing all the fruits individually so instead of having seed fruit categories they have seed fruits and then they list like wheat barley oat list all the fruits individually and if they do that, then if you go play on a map which adds extra fruits or extra crop types, they won't work. You won't be able to plant those. But again, nice double door sheds here on Stevie's map, which is very, very nice. Gives you a nice case combine harvester. Nine, the 9240. I noticed on this map, that the um, you've got a silage bin here for making uh, um, bunker, which is a bit strange because it's quite a long way away from where the cows are. Um, on the original Lakeland Vale map, the, the the farm bunker was in a bit of a weird place because it was near the sheep. <laughs> but hey ho, again for someone like me. I personally don't use bunkers when I'm doing my um when I'm playing. I I I've kind of I'm I've kind of grown past that point. When the game first came out, I spent a lot of time doing bunkers and fermenting silage in bunkers. But once we got mods that gave us fermenting plants and fermenting stations and buildings, I switched to those. It's just less hassle. Um you got your windrow, farm windrow sails over here and also a shed that Stevie's attached. So you can start, um, store vehicles and equipment in this part of the building, like the bale stacker there. But then over here, you've got the sell point for your um, straw, hay, silage, etc. And if we have a look at the sell point quickly, the farm barn, as it's called. Uh, you can sell cotton here, so you can get rid of cotton bales here, wood chips, silage, grass, hay, straw. I don't know about pellets. Yes, straw pellets can be sold here as well. Hay pellets can be sold here as well. Loose, of course, now because of the update to the straw harvest mod. Um, and obviously the alfalfa windrow alfalfa hay and alfalfa silage can all be sold here as well um, how does the price of so the hay pellets and straw pellets are worth about five times as much as standard loose straw and loose hay so that's nice because the last thing you want to do is go through all the time and effort doing the pellets and then get absolutely gypped on the price. But that's more to do with the straw harvest add-on mod because it sets the price and with the updates 
Um, the last update for Straw Harvest add-on has completely changed the way the pricing works for that mod. Um, we noticed it straight away on the multiplayer server, on the Fenton Forest server, after we'd updated the mod, that basically the price of pellets now is been really nerfed. You're not getting 1500 bucks for a thousand litres anymore. You're only getting like, you know, three, four hundred bucks. So you're not going to get super duper mega fancy rich doing the um, straw harvest stuff now like you were when it in the original version of the mod and some of the beta versions the guys have really changed the um, nerf the price but apparently you do now get more money if you sell the stuff in pallets again hard to say for definite whether that is the case or not um, Plus, I believe you can now only sell the pallets of pellets at the pellet sell point. So even though you can see that some of these sell points will accept your straw and hay pellets, they will only accept them loose. They won't these the animal supplies and farm barn shouldn't accept them in pallets. The only way to sell the pallets is with the placeable pallet sell point that comes with the straw harvest mod, but that's a separate mod. We're here to look at this map. So you're starting fleet of equipment and Stevie's given us case tractors this time. Now I don't want to take credit for that. It's probably completely unrelated, but obviously on my Lakeland Vale Let's Play, I've been using all case equipment this time. I got rid of all the John Deere stuff and that, which tends to be what we usually get. And um, we have got a fent over here as well, which is nice, nice big fent tractor. And then sort of the usual assortments of trailers and wagons that we get. Uh, the wind rower, the Elmer, auger wagon, which again, I replaced that with the JNM just because I, I like the JNM. I like the millennial farmer. Um, grain cart we get the crone mower to start with obviously this is on new farmer um, I don't know if you get the equipment on farm manager or not or start from scratch you've got the cedar which of course is Stevie's modded cedar um, you've got a cultivator you've got your subsoiler which again removes the need to have a plow uh, and it's eight meters so it's quite nice and wide um, you've got your, your fertilizer and lime spreader there and your sprayer and then you've got your um, silage roller compactor thingy heat me jig here got your tele handler over here your mana too um, with bucket and obviously your, your forks are over here your pallet forks because obviously the sheet pen is right here this time around and you've got your uh, obviously wall pallets spawn here and Stevie's giving you a convenient sell point just to push them into and get rid of them there if you want to you can also sell like I say your cotton there if you want to you can sell cotton here um, I don't remember if you can sell eggs there Cotton. No. I think on his egg sell point mod, he had a, a mod which does a similar provides you with a similar sell point that you can place at the chickens. He doesn't actually put bundle that with the map. Um but you can get a little placeable like box, which I'm guessing on this map, because the animal input trigger is here you would need to place it over here in this area but you get a little box that basically you can just push your eggs into and they get sold um, to save you having to pick them up and transport them all the way over to the um, um, wherever on the map buys them um, you could also if you have don't have the pallet replacer mod like I do and you still have your your chicken pens making the little cardboard boxes 
uh, you could just place the egg cell point straight on top of the spawn point and then the eggs will just automatically get sold the minute the chickens make them so you'll never have to manually do it with that but that's the main that's the farm the starting farm which on this map on Lakeland Vale 2 is right at the bottom of the map on the original on Lakeland Vale 1 it's kind of here your starting farm is in the kind of in the middle of the map um, remember um, and you have a cut four fields you have a grass field and that's pretty much your lot um, you do start with five fields on this particular map You've got canola on the first one, soybeans on the second one, alfalfa on the third, which I'll show you in a second, and then field four is a grass field, and then you've got wheat on field five. As you can see from the layout of this map, there are some big fields, some very big fields. Uh, there are some small fields. Uh, there's a nice group of fields up here that are, seem to be all the same size for doing a nice random different crops so the farmer that owns this particular field for example he's got sugar beets potatoes corn sunflowers and soybeans so he's pretty much covering himself off quite nicely there's another big grass field located over here behind the animal dealer and then you've got your forest section over here um, your sawmill and wood chip sales is just down here this time above the BGA um, and opposite the petrol station uh, the pigs and horses as I say are no longer at the main farm they are located here on the map and you do own them from the start but they're not located at the main farm uh, you do also own the roads or the, the run around the map so again if you do play with seasons and you need to do your snow shoveling and stuff like that you can clear snow from the roads um, the other little tracks and pathways on the map you won't be able to do until you own the land So like the, the little track here between 17 and 9 You won't be able to do that until you own both fields um, Same with the little track here in This area of land here on it's a little bit unfortunate I would say my little bit of feedback would be that this lovely grass area here which would be great for mowing on and doing baling that sort of thing you can't buy that without buying all the forestry area and that's going to cost you two million bucks so that's not cheap let's have a quick run now i'm going to drive a vehicle i'm probably going to take the pickup truck to drive you around the map and show you around the map uh, i would i would take the truck isn't really much of a requirement to so again you've got a nice concrete placeable area there look a little bit smaller than the one on the original Lakeland map if you want to place some things at your farm um, food mixes for your animals maybe um, although you're probably gonna only have the cow feed mixer down here maybe bale storage sheds perhaps is something you might want to add in the little seed production buildings so we'll have a drive down here first of all like i say we've got the uh, alfalfa field on the right here that's the new crop type that comes with this map um we then have uh, the soybeans and then we've got the canola on the other side the drive up here to the main road we've got a main road that right outside the farm that traffic does run on and the traffic does run in both directions this time round unlike on the original Lakeland map where traffic only went in one traveled in one direction across the map you've also got some pedestrians walking around which gives you that little kind of lived in vibe but as with the original Lakeland Vale, the traffic is only on this one bit of road. As you venture off into the rest of the map, there is no traffic. And apparently, Stevie says the rest of the map is very customizable. 
to the player like the original Lakeland Vale map. However, I do kind of find one little problem or issue with that. And it's to do with things like this um, behind me. Um, the road signs and uh, the street lights. You can't remove them on this map. When you go into your garage and have a look at all your equipment, there is no option for the lights, road signs, and hedges. So you can't sell that stuff off and get rid of it, which means if you was planning on repainting the whole map and, um, you know, getting rid of some of the roads and putting in your own fields and stuff like that, it might be a little bit harder to do this time. If you can't get rid of the hedges, you can't get rid of the signs, and uh, you can't get rid of the lampposts. But as we travel down the road, we've got the store, obviously. And again, located very close to the farm, so you're not going to have to travel millions of miles with your new purchases. Which again is a feature that was very similar to um, the original Lakeland Vale map. The, farm is the, the shop and the farm are very close together on that map. Although Stevie does have the reset point, when you reset vehicles, they do reset to the farm, not the store. Um, you've got your, your dairy farm here. Um, you're selling your milk, soybeans and eggs. Nice little sell point. Again, same model that he uses pretty much on all his maps. So if you've seen Fenton Forest and you've seen Lakeland Vale, you've seen that building but again fairly nice and straightforward to be able to drive in on and all or unload great for people who like i say do use course play or mods like that for the autonomous selling of product travel down here a little bit further you've got one of the placeable areas on the map big concrete area for again for you to place and um, so you've got room again to place your factory buildings your global company type stuff or whatever else you want to place again if you're starting in farm manager or start from scratch mode you could buy that bit of land and actually build your farm on it put your sheds <laughs> keep your tractors and stuff on it and then as you come down here you've just got a few houses again for people um, you've got field six which you don't own to start with but you can probably add it to your farm quite quickly and then there's another little field down here Field 8. Nice little fields. And again, you can combine these fields together. You've got little field 7 down here as well. So again, field 7 and 8, very easy for players to combine those together. Make them one big field, plow them together. Well, I need to come around and remove a few trees. I'm also, as I'm going around the map, going to be looking at trees uh, because Stevie's asked me to pay attention to the trees and see if there are any issues with any like floating trees and things like that. Because he places all the trees on the map by hand. He doesn't use splines and things like that. So every tree is hand placed. So if there are any floating ones, um, I just need to make a note of their position so he can go in and fix them prior to full release of the map which is nice so far around the main farm area I've not seen any um, I will need to go up into the forestry area and have a bit of a hunt around there see if there's any um, I noticed the trees are a bit of a mixture there are a bit of a mixed bunch of trees different varieties um, which again, if anybody's watched my Lakeland Vale series, you'll know there are issues. The bendy trees here, these ones, you can't chop them down with the in-game forestry equipment. The um, 
scorpion kings and stuff same goes for some of the other trees i think these like trees here i don't know what these trees are i'm going to call them redwoods maybe because they're a little bit ready in color you can't chop them down either with the um in-game scorpion king tools which gave me a bit of a headache when i was going to expand and modify some of the fields on the original map it meant i couldn't do may earn any money from them because i couldn't log them so i ended up just basically chopping them down and removing them with the t-rex mod from black sheet modding so any of those trees on the map you will probably have to do the same but when you get up into the logging area in a minute all the trees up there are the proper pine trees that you can you can chop down you got lakeside lodge over here a little restaurant um, no cell point attached to this unfortunately um so not really a lot of reasons to venture down here however with mods that are available Again, Stevie's egg sell point. You could put your own. You could put a sell point there for selling eggs to the um, restaurant and milk and things like that. So you could you could create your own sell point at that um, Lakeside Lodge, which would give you other options. And then what we'll do? We'll have a drive back up the. Uh, um, main building a couple of different ways to access into the shop here nice um, he's also on this this map this time he's actually added a fuel point a fueling station here so you can actually buy your fuel um, which wasn't on the original Lakeland Vale map so I ended up having to place one of Stevie's diesel refill station things at the store for me to buy fuel um, which is not a problem but he's actually added one now and it's next to the um, cash point he's moved the workshop trigger a little bit and he has put markers on, in, on the ground this time show you where the workshop trig the workshop service point is for repairing and selling your vehicles here at the store Purchase point for the store is still inside, as you will well know, having watched my Lakeland, my Lakeland Vale 1 videos. On the store, we come up here, we've got the um, supermarket, and again there is, a, I there is a sell point here for your eggs and stuff just around the other side of that building so again you can bring your eggs to the supermarket and sell your eggs located just along the front here shouldn't be a problem getting in there with trailers and if you've got an auto load trailer it shouldn't be a problem to drive through there again just make sure your auto load tra trailer is low again one of the reasons why I kind of like the trailers like that the low loaders because uh, then basically all you need to do is unload your um unload your eggs your wool whatever whatever you have in pallets unload them onto the trailer and when you drive through the box they'll get sold on some of the other trailers the big trailers, the big tr like truck trailers or loading trailers they can be a little bit too high so when you go through the sell point, the stuff doesn't auto sell. Um, and then if you actually unload it off the trailer and drop it on the ground, you sometimes run into some issues getting the stuff to sell. It's almost like the, the pallets need to just be off the ground a little bit. But that's not this map. This is all the maps I've played on and um, don't want to confuse people with that. Uh, we've got the US mill here, which is, again, same US mill that we've seen on the original map you've got your spinnery at the back here for selling your cotton and your wool you've got your manure and slurry sales here for selling manure and slurry and round the front you've got your normal grain hoppery bin thing for um selling your 
or your other crops, basically, or your harvestables. Um, looks okay. My only slight concern with it, I would must say, um. Is that again depending on what sort of trailers and trucks you're using how you come in again if I'm thinking more for the course play or o drive type players um, depending how you arrive into that cell point like for example if you had a big truck and you had like a, a Wilson Super B trailer on the back and you drove through here this in this direction you might find when you get to the end here you can't turn you might hit the barrier it doesn't look like you will it does look like you've got plenty of room but it depends how long your train is i suppose how many trailers you put on your truck i suppose whether you run into issues with the pace setter the standard wilson pace setter that stevie does give you in the starting equipment you have no issues with that no issues whatsoever and I'm just looking at trees, trying to spot um, any floating objects, decals, that sort of thing. Not seen any thus far. Over here, you've got your BGA facility. You don't own the BGA at the start, but you do own the clamps. Looks like there's a bit of a floating decal. There's like floating decals at the um, at the BGA. Let me go to my Facebook page quickly. I need to open up the conversation with uh, Stevie. like floating decals there and keep our eye out for things like that and we'll note them as we find them and report them I do like the fact that you get a proper tip trigger at the BGA on Stevie's maps. So when you're selling your silage and stuff to the BGA, you haven't got to muck about with buckets and forks and things. You can just drive your trailer in and tip. And obviously you get your digestate out from over here. So again, they're easy for the people who use mods like course play and stuff to set up auto routes, man, uh, you know, courses. I also like the fact that the BJ has got quite a big area for it, for um, placeables. So again, you do own the silage clamps over here. Um, and you can sell them. So you could actually remove the clamps from the map, the, the, the bunkers. And then you could place whatever buildings you liked in here once you own the land, once you own the BJ. Um, which is kind of cool so you could add like fermenting actual fermenting buildings you could maybe add stevie's organic fertilizer factory here 
and turn this into like your industrial little complex for making things like you, you could have your compost maker over here if you run those mods um we've got the fuel petrol station over here the normal fuel station over here which does have a buy point for buying diesel so if you make your own diesel on this map there is a place back here where you can sell it it's listed under the sell points as um, diesel one I might have renamed that to something like garage services or something because <laughs> diesel one sounds a bit weird when there's no other diesel sell points on the map and obviously you can buy your diesel from here for your vehicles and as I'm driving around now I did have a look at the map earlier and I thought oh you might have some issues but thankfully it seems like you can actually fill your vehicles without having to drive undercover which again the things like combines and some of the bigger vehicles you might have issues driving them undercover so it's nice to know you if you do decide to use like the filling stations for filling your vehicles you you can fill them from outside and like the one back here as well you can fill so again if you have got massively tall vehicles or massively wide vehicles you don't have to worry about squeeze trying to see if they will squeeze in here because you can refill them but like you say you've got a place there on the map you can sell fuel as well as buy it over here you've got your wood logging place so you've got your log sales over here selling your logs you've got your wood chip sales over here you then got quite an area behind it which works very nicely for um, logging for placeables again if you want to put some sheds in again if you want to start on the map as start, start out on the map doing logging first before getting into the farming I know there's a lot of people that like to do logging you can start there in farm manager or start from scratch and get a bunch of stuff you've then got Jeeb's mill which is from Lakeland Vale the original map and seems to be in the same place um, Stevie has added an extra little sell point however I have already spotted a glitch with that um, so you've got your, your unload point in here for your trailers but obviously if you have the articulated trailers that lift up and tip sometimes these sell points aren't great for that and also some of the trailers with the the bottom hoppers can sometimes get a little bit beached uh, especially if you use like the super bees and stuff so stevie added a another sell point just outside however unfortunately he hasn't enabled the collision on it I have reported that to him he has said it's fixed he has fixed it or is fixing it tonight <laughs> straight away um, which is fantastic of him and he's sat there working away on the map so as I find stuff and report it to him he can fix it you then got your animal dealer over here where obviously you buy your animals you've also got a little sell point over here for again bringing your stuff to the animal supplies so selling your hay your grass your silage your TMR, your pig food, water, potato, sugar beets, all those sort of things that you can sell at the animal supplies. Your potatoes, steamed potatoes they'll buy, alfalfa they'll buy. Um, so, you know, they'll, the, the, the animal supplies will pretty much buy everything. Look, corn, potatoes, sugar beets, oats. They won't buy wheat and barley. Um, but pretty much everything else they do buy and again the only th again my only slight worry is that maybe depending on what vehicle you're using and what trailers the turning out of there again could be a bit tight and tricky and again if you like to use course playing things um might take a little bit of practice to record a course you might have to record a course very slowly make sure you get the turns and stuff working in the right place 
Um, as discussed, big grass area over here. It's not an actual field, but once you own the land, you could make it a field and put whatever you want on it, or you could leave it as grass and then mow it and everything and get way more grass for your farm needs and for your animals. Got another little placeable area back here. So again, you can put your own sheds in, keep equipment down here. Very handy. And then obviously you've got your, uh, your forestry area. With all the trees that you might possibly want to chop down and remove and log. And I believe that all these trees are Scorpion King compatible. If for use chopping down with the actual heavy duty forestry equipment and logging and stuff. So you can do all that. I need to have a bit of a drive around in here. Just to see if there is any floating trees. So I can report those to Mr. Stevie. Uh, so he can get any issues like that fixed before public release. As I say, this is a very early access version of the map. It's not by anywhere. It's not complete. Stevie's constantly tweaking things based on feedback from people like myself and the other testers. Um, he's also got some other little plans in mind to implement and make some little changes too. So there might be some differences between the map you download and play on when the map is released see this tree here this tree here will give you problems because you won't be able to chop that down with the scorpion king same as these these trees here so just need to watch that you've got to really look for the the the, the actual pine trees um Otherwise, you can come unstuck when you come to log trees and find out you can't chop most of them down with the um, in-game equipment. And that's not a map issue, that's a giant's issue. Giants, for whatever reason, set some of the trees in the game to not be supported by the forestry equipment. So, your Scorpion Kings can't chop down certain types of trees, which seems a bit silly to me. But thankfully we have the T-Rex mod from Black Sheep Modding which will happily delete trees for you. Um, and if you've also got the, the Brooks Big Daddy from way back when the first game first released, you can use that to charge around removing trees and wood chipping them if you want to get keep the wood chips from the trees. If you're not too wor worried about wood chips, by all means just use the T-Rex. But if you want to earn a little bit of money for your tree removal, get yourself the um, Brooks Big Daddy mod thing. Nice lake in here as well. Nice pond. Again, for the people that like to do their tree logging and stuff, um, there is a quite a sizable forestry area on the map to keep you busy, keep you started. It is only a standard size map; it's not 4x or anything. A lot, uh, as with the original Lakeland Vale map, um, it's just standard size. Um, I know some people now only want to play big maps, but. Honestly, I think this map will suit a lot of people because there are big fields on it. There are some big fields. Um, I mean, something like Field 9 is ridiculous. I wouldn't want to farm that on my own as a single player in single player. On multiplayer, a field like Field 9, Field 11, 14, 26 would be great to have multiple people working on side by side. A lot of the other fields could be quite happily tackled by individuals, so gives you the option. Like I say, I would consider this map for a multiplayer map after Fenton Forest, once I'm finished with the Fenton Forest map on the server. A map like this would be, be a consideration. 
by that point it would it would be in public release and no doubt it would have had several updates and um, stuff from Stevie anyway so it would be even better at that point when we're ready when I'm ready to switch my server over to a new map but I'm liking it it's strange because I do kind of want to do at some point I, I've never really done logging in farm sim because of the issues you get with the physics of the game I've kind of stayed away from logging but there's a, there's a part of me that's kind of itching to have a go at it and spend a bit of time on the map because it's something I've not done on maps and it would be give me something a bit different to do um, as opposed to just you know the regular field work plowing fields harvesting fields replanting fields and all that kind of stuff but yeah I mean, I'm, I'm liking it I'm liking the map I'm liking what Stevie's kind of done I did comment earlier um, when I first looked to the map because I've had I did load the map up when I first received it just to make sure it loaded up okay and had a quick bit of a look around it I thought it would be awesome if maybe as another element Stevie took if Stevie was to take the Lakeland Vale 1 map and whack it on the side of this map make it like a 2x map you've got your traffic line running along the top there you could extend that with the traffic line from like the original Lakeland Vale you would have to spin the, the original Lakeland Vale map round 180 degrees because obviously on the original Lakeland Vale map the traffic runs along the top but you'd have quite an interesting map then if you could have the original Lakeland Vale map and Lakeland Vale 2 on as one map that would be kind of cool I think I love the fact as well you've got your hunter call of the wild tree stand for um, hunting animals <laughs> I wonder if a hunter call of the wild mod could come to farm sim people could give you animals to actually go and hunt <laughs> but yeah plenty of forestry to go at um, and as I'm driving around I'm not seeing any floaty trees I haven't uncovered any or I haven't seen any notice noticeably obvious um, I mean one of the easiest way to find the tree the floaty trees would be to come round with the paint tool and remove all the, the grass and foliage set the ground back to it to a like a, a a concrete texture something that's flat and then you would definitely see if trees are levitating and floating above the, um, the surface the good thing is with a Stevie's map there will be absolutely zero buried trees. Stevie does not do that awful, awful practice of placing trees below the map. Um, like some of the more, <laughs> the more, if you like, celebrated map makers, some of the giants, giants own map makers um, some of their, the mod hub famous map makers they have this nasty habit of burying trees on their maps and burying them under the ground and giving collisions and causing all sorts of problems for your vehicles and workers and equipment um, Stevie doesn't do that all his trees are definitely above ground you can get to every single tree and remove every single tree without any issues like I say, you are supposed to be able to customise this map as well as you would have done on the original Lakeland Vale. Um, what I'm probably going to do is I'm going to add some cash now. Just to see. Um... what we can do. I'm going to buy some land. 
I'll buy that big foresty area as well. Because if you go into your paint tools, what apparently you can do. Um, now, oh, wrong button. I've just lowered the ground there, haven't I? I think. <laughs> Should have pressed that one. There we go. And let's find something nice. So you can plant bushes as well with the train tools built into the map. So you can plant bushes. So again, one less reason to need to bury trees in a map. Stevie actually uses foliage. He actually uses bushes as bushes. You've got your grass. You've got your different types of grass texture. And you get down here and the, you can plant all different types of flowers. So you, if you want to paint your map and customize it yourself, you can do there's different type stevie adds loads of extra foliage that you, you can paint your map and decorate your map with i mean it's not so nice so so nice lovely little purple flowers there some nice red ones so you can intermingle this as you're painting and obviously back to your bushes more bushes Leafy stuff, loads of leafy stuff, even more leafy stuff. I don't know of another map author that gives you quite so many options. Nice big tall wild grass there. And you got this kind of like, you got your back to your muddy texture. Yeah, you can actually just come down the whole map I do believe you can paint over all the roads because like I say these roads here are painted onto the map they're not actual like roads like the one the traffic runs on so you could if you wa really wanted to you could like you say do away with the road <laughs> and you, you've got room then to make your fields bigger extend your fields um, and things like that now buying these fields I don't know if it gives me um, any kind of retrospective um, access to doesn't seem to so even though i've bought all this land i don't have access to remove the lamp posts or the um um road signs Maybe that's something he will add before the full public release. Because you could do, you could do it on the original Lakeland Vale map. When you went into your garage menu, there was an option for road signs. Ralph Banks is now following. Thank you, Ralph Banks, for the follow. Welcome to the channel. Welcome to the stream. Why didn't... Um I get an actual proper notification for that. Unless he's a YouTube subscriber and not. Hmm. Oh no, Ralph Banks has followed on Facebook. That's why. He's a Facebook follower. Not a um, Twitch or YouTube follower. Okay, fair enough. 
But yeah, as I was saying, on the original Lakeland VAT, when you come into your garage, you had an option here for road signs, lamp posts, hedges, and you could remove those um, and sell them and get rid of them from the map, which then obviously gave you more freedom then to completely redesign fields. Uh, as we head over here, we've got a, a large placeable area on the map which is right next to the pig pen and also the horse far the horse paddock the horse the stable so you've got your pig area first which is pretty much exactly the same as the one on the original lake the first lakeland vale map you've got your uh, manure and slurry here which is a little bit different i must admit i do kind i did kind of like and i have in just in the last episode or so on my let's play series that i've recorded not the last episode or so that you can watch on the channel um really do like the fact that the pig and cow the manure pin the the manure for the pigs and the cows are side by side on the original lakeland vale map so you can empty both pen um, both manure slots at the same time same with the slurry the slurry for the pigs and the cows are side by side so you can empty both slurry tanks from without having to move miles um, what we got back here that must be your straw point for blowing your straw into the pig pen you've obviously got your animal pen extension for um, doing your water the builder will come and put the pipes in Fill point for the pigs is down here in this black corner here. Um, your animal dialogue. Which does make it a little bit interesting when you're going to use a trailer. Like you use one of the big tra animal transport trailers. I appreciate it can't be in the normal place. The normal place for it would be on this door here. But obviously you can't have triggers too close together when you've got like your um, slurry and manure pits here it would get a bit in the way you've got your horse stable over here um and i must admit the one little the one little thing about the, the horse pen that i don't like is that the the animal dialogue box is not actually at the horse stable it's not here um it's actually right down here in between the food and the water trough now again for me personally might be different for other people but for my on my lakeland vale let's play that i'm doing now and if you uh, don't know the lakeland vale let's play um i'll give you a link to the youtube channel in the chat and i'll give you a link to the latest video which should be a lakeland vale video that went live this morning um, for you to go and check out but on that map i generally keep my because your ho the horses are something you're selling you're buying horses you're training them you're selling them after a few days once they're fully trained you sell them i keep my horse trailer um which is, i i use the the art mechanic i use the big boy i use the big boy horse trailer And basically, once I've delivered the animals, uh, the horses, to the pen, I just leave the trailer parked in front of the stable. And then it's there for me to load them up once they're fully trained. And it's completely out the way of all the other little boxes and areas that you need to get to. Um, it's going to be a bit weird, I think, with the horse dialogue being here. Um that I'm going to permanently always have the animal trailer sticking out into the yard here. Which again, when I'm doing things like feeding and I'm driving through the, the food pen and I'm wanting to drive, I'm, like, I'm going to drive through the food pen to fill the oats and straw and I'm going to smack right into the horse trailer. Um, Um, 
Um, so that's going to be a bit weird. Having the animal dialogue box there. Also, when you um, have bought your water um, trigger, is the water trigger going to be here where this gate is? Because that could be in, especially with the gate opening that way. So the gate opens out into the trailer. Um, I would have maybe have had the water pipes go this side, possibly, with the animal pen extension mod. Um, yeah, and this gate here. See, that's why I would have thought maybe put the um, the horse animal dialogue boxy thing. Uh, Yeah, a little bit strange. Got your obviously your um, food food trough. Very easy to get to on the pigs. Much like the cows, it's a massive, huge. I think it's the same building. The cows and the pigs share the same model building on the map, which is pretty cool. And um, and like I say, then you've got this big placeable area over here. Which again, in Farm Manager or start from scratch, you're welcome to do whatever you want on it. I would assume what you're probably meant to do is buy your riding field. <laughs> um, buy Stevie's riding field. Maybe whack that down on the map like so and then you've got you you've got your area to exercise your horses quite close to your horse stable over there I mean you can always throw in other things here as well there's still plenty of room for some other placeables around it and you have that option for again the people that like to get into horse training and with seasons and stabling and stuff like that and having to actually you know look after horses with seasons because you don't buy and sell them good option for the land but again it's not forced upon you from the start like i say the the, the horse training thing is included in the map as a placeable object that you can buy and put down but it's not on the map to begin with so everybody's free to decide whether or not they want to place it or not uh, another thing people commonly commonly ask about is collisions and Stevie does on all his hedges on this map all the hedges do have collisions so no driving through hedges taking shortcuts <laughs> all his hedgerows have physical collisions Which is again is a little bit why I'm surprised there isn't an option in the store to sell the hedges from the map. Um, so you can remove them and then repaint all the land and all the terrain and everything. Like I say, this we're at the top of the map now where we've got this lovely little bit of um, a bit of a field. Um, Got another little bit of a lake, and then we get to the new placeable area, which again I believe is where you are intended to place all your global company type factories, mods, any modded cell points you have, anything that you know, like maybe your Agraz land trade, your pellet haul, um, from the straw harvest add on, any other mods you might add and use popcorn factory i know is something that someone um seems to be quite popular with a few people a popcorn making factory where you deliver your corn to it and then you get popcorn out that you can sell um so you've got these little areas again on the original lakeland vat you just had big squares along the top of the map on the along the top of the map here on the on lakeland one and then you had like your us mill you had your 
supermarket, you had the church, you had the diesel, um, the garage services, as I called it, where you sell your diesel. And then you had your, like, your animal dealer and the store. You had your dairy. It's a little bit different this time. The sell points are spread out a little bit. The dairy, the US mill, spinnery and stuff are, are near the farm. Diesel sales, Jeeb's mill are in the middle of the map, along with the animal supplies, animal dealer. And then you've got the grain mill all the way over here. Like I say, you can spread stuff out, so it gets people moving and driving on your map. Um, there are less sell points on this map than on the uh, Lakeland Vale 1. Um, county Mill has disappeared. We don't have County Mill anymore uh, on the map, which was the one down the bottom of the map, right at the bottom. But we have got Grain Mill over here. Um, and this map, this one does have the uh, uh, collisions, unlike Jeeb's Mill. <laughs> so you don't fall through the sell point when you're trying to sell your stuff. Um, but it's quite nice, quite a nice map. I do like it. I have look, enjoyed looking around it. Like I say, all your sell points pretty clear. Hey, what eggs are worth big money on this map? Eggs have always been a big money maker on Stevie's maps, and this is on normal economy as well. By the way, For anyone wondering? Uh, contracts. There are contracts on all the fields and stuff like that. Um. Obviously, the fact that I've just bought a load of fields means there is quite a lot of. stuff I might do is now sell some of that back <laughs> I will buy the placeable areas though because I do like having placeables I have got the global company mod so we'll buy the BGA just so we can test that out Concrete area there behind the spinnery. There's the one down there that we know of. Next to the dairy. And then we'll have a look at what the fields are asking us for. Right. Switch the grass on. Probably got grass to mow straight away if we wanted to do some grass mowing. Um at the fields I've bought. Oh, we've got all the tops and stuff to remove up here from the top of the map. You can see where I've painted over the road and removed the road. Um, I can probably undo that in a minute. <laughs> yeah, we got ready to harvest. So we've got soybeans, sunflowers and corn. So we need to head back to the farm then, now, and we need to go grab ourselves our harvester. And our other equipment. Again, one of the things I do like about the map that Stevie's done is every field, there is at least some way on the field that you can work in a direction where you will have no issues turning around. So again, if you use AI workers, um, follow me, course play, stuff like that, you will find you won't have issues with workers getting stuck on trees or objects because generally speaking, there is a way on every field um, for you to um, drive around and work around the field without actually running into anything. There's plenty of room to turn equipment and machines around. One of the things I did like when I saw this map was the fact that there are a couple of um, organic fields. I do kind of wish there was a few more. Um, maybe Stevie could have done a bit more with some of these fields to make them less square and rectangular. 
I know I sound like a bit of a stuck record when I talk about square and rectangle fields, but you have to remember, I've played over 3,000 hours in this game now. Um, so when I'm playing on a map, I like to be, you know, involved, stimulated and stuff. And unfortunately, square fields don't require you as a player to do a lot. <laughs> you know, you're just driving in straight lines up and down, up and down. At least when fields are organic and they, they move and they curve and they bend and they have corners, you have to steer, which keeps you actually busy <laughs> from a perspective. I know people say, ah, but the AI workers struggle with round fields and irregular fields and that. Yeah, it's the kind of the swings and roundabouts to it. What I did like with Stevie's first map for Farm Sim 19, Fenton Forest, and his 4X version of Fenton Forest, was that he included an even number of irregular natural fields and square rectangular fields. So players that have a preference for one type of field or another were catered for. Um, on Lakeland Vale 1, People who only people who like square fields were delighted with that map. People who didn't like square fields were very disappointed with the map. Uh, on this map, Stevie has come up with a couple of, like I say, a couple of fields which are a little bit different shaped. There's still a little. There's still sadly just for me personally. Uh, and I'm sorry Stevie if you're watching there is just too many square fields anyway we'll come back to the farm I've got the pickup truck nice and dirty we'll now go and grab our um, combine harvester Take our truck to the top of the film. Our Wilson pay setter and we'll do some harvesting. We'll be able to check and see if we can harvest all the fields without a problem. Now I do believe I am rocking the um So, uh, where's the sunflower header? Is that in here? It's... Over there. Right. We'll take the sun that header with us as well, because we'll need that for the corn. We need this header behind me for the soybeans. Nice that we get the, as I say, case harvester tractor um it's a little bit of a switch up i have to say on stevie's equipment list because normally he gives you like the new holland and he gives you a couple of john deere tractors but it looks like he's um like i say i don't want to take claim i don't want to take claim for it if i'm wrong but maybe he's been inspired a little bit on my let's play on Lakeland using the um, case equipment more this time than the green machines although I will you know I will say right now when I started playing Lakeland the first map the original um, it was my intention to do John Deere equipment I had loads of John Deere mods installed and then I ended up not using any of them. <laughs> uh, or as yet, I've not used any of them on that series because I've been using all the um, case. Right, let's see if follow me will work. He will. Right.
like I say, single lane, one one access road in and out of the starting farm, starting fields. You have to come through here. You have to go across this little bit of a stream, this little bit of body of water. Combine header clock collides a little bit with the rock. Nice to see the traffic driving on both sides of the road again though on this map. They're not just flowing in from one direction and then driving straight out. But once you get off the main road, as as I say, all the other roads are traffic free. They are painted on the map so you can paint over them with whatever textures you like. You can plough the road, these roads out and put fields on them if you wanted. Um, the ability to remove the lampposts, no, the, or the inability to remove the lampposts is a bit of a concern. So that does limit you a little bit. Same as all the um, Lakeland, welcome to Lakeland Vale road signs if you can't rem remove a couple of them. Like I say, you're supposed to be able to like, if you wanted to, you could plough right the way across from one edge of the map to the other and have a massive, massive field if you really wanted to. It goes all the way up here, obviously. You can't remove the hard standing objects like the horses and the pigs and the cell points, but you could have a field that went like a big U-shape round here up to the cell points at the top back round um, however that's going to be a little bit more difficult if you can't remove the, the lamp posts and the road signs because every time you load the game they'll be there in your fields <laughs> the road signs will always respawn even if you knock them down with your tractor or whatever They'll respawn the, the next time you load the map. But it's cool. Slightly different take on, as I say, for people who looked at Lakeland 1 and were like, not so sure about that map. Lakeland 2 probably gives you a, a different chance to do things. Look at things a bit different. So here's where I did my terrain alt painting. land okay I can't paint all the road back in paint some of it Where's the, where's the truck? 
truck not follow me? I thought I put him into follow me mode. Oh, did I turn it off again? <laughs> Don't be me. I've crossed the corner of field four, which of course is our grass field. Big grass field for providing all your sheep and cows with all their hay requirements, silage requirements. Although it could be a little bit of a stretch with seasons. If you play with seasons, like I say, I'm not using seasons on this testing process uh, because I've had more than enough experiences of seasons being buggy and glitchy when trying to actually do let's plays that I just don't use it at the minute. I don't use seasons at all at the minute because it just seems to have, it just has too many issues for me with the mods that I use, the maps that I want to play on doesn't seem to want to work and causes too many headaches for me. So I'm not rocking seasons. So unfortunately, I can't test the seasons aspects of the map, like the dynamic mud, things like that. Um, unless it rains in game, normally, naturally. Um, which I think, I think it does. I'm having that thing again. Ah, follow me's glitching out. Doesn't like it. Interesting. It's so maybe. Follow me didn't work last time. We, I've, I've had this. We've had this issue on the server as well. We follow me. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. It seems a bit weird. Don't think the last update from Giants has helped matters either. In that regards. One of the things I probably will do as well tonight, I'll go around all the fields uh, and just check field definitions uh, using the easy dev tool to check that the field definitions are set up correct. <laughs> Why is the head spinning? It's strange. do. I'll actually disconnect that header for the time being. Right, what I'm going to do, I'm going to sign a worker. This. Black saw. 
I'll hop out. He'll carry on. Uh, I'm going to have a bit of a play. Like I say, with field definitions. Uh, we are on field 24. Field 24. To plow. I wouldn't imagine for a second we would get issues on a square field with field definitions. I would more expect that with the irregular ones, but we'll have a look. So field 25, let's do that one there. In any crop getting left over. Good. That field works fine. I'm going to harvest the other three fields, so that's not going to affect them too much. Field 20. We'll check that one. That's definitely field 20, I think. Yep, that field looks okay. Field 19. Basically, I'm just checking the edges. When I do the change the, with the field defs, when I do the easy def commands, I want to check to make sure that it clears the whole field. It doesn't leave any crop behind. It doesn't miss any crop. Um... It doesn't eat more of the ground than it's supposed to, which seems to be the case over here. 18. fine your 18 looks like it perfectly square as well no crops left behind um, we will change that back to plow though love the um, easy dev controls for that particular reason uh, what field have we got next? Field 11. This will be the one to test. This is a big field. corner of field 11 there's no issues with the field definitions we'll run all the way down the bottom and then we'll check some of the bendy fields as well because the bendy fields will be the real the real clues when we come to do those over onto field nine we'll plow field nine uh, 
there's a little bit down here, look. There's a little bit of a glit down here, look. Uh, where there's some crop left over. So, yeah, there's a little bit of a field... Yeah, field definition error there. That probably just needs to be extended a little bit. I know Stevie's gone for the rounded corners on that field. He probably just needs to just, just move his little... His gimbals, whatever they are, in the map. Field 17, we plow that. We'll be able to see if there's any crops missing on the map. Seeing any. Good. Apart from that one field, which I'm, I'm aware Stevie knows about field um, 9. That big field, he, he already knows about the definition issues with that. So, I don't need to report that one. That bit there, he's he's on that already. And check all the other ed edges. appear to be any issues down here at the bottom of the pretty cool right let's head over here so field eight the issues with field eight none that i can see Field seven. No, field edges and definitions all look good here. Not seeing any leftover crop. removed it field six got the field definitions on field six you know all right they're looking okay run up here field 5 is our field starting farm field so we'll do field 5 edges think there's any issues uh, we'll come over and we'll do field four which is the grass field which is one of the irregular fields Field four.
Yeah, definitions look good. Definitions look very good. I'm pleased with that. Um, the true test, though, will be the fields over here, won't they? Uh, Let's do field four again. Plowing and liming field four might be a bit of an issue. I would imagine most people probably wouldn't do it though. Field 16. I'll do 50% fertilizer this time. quick run round the outside check on all the good stuff Looks good. In seemingly issues there with the field definitions. We'll then go and do field 13, which is the one over here. Field 15, should I say.
Not seeing any issues there. Nice. We can do 14 next. <laughs> Might as well plough all the fields. Yeah. That one seems to have worked okay. Twenty six while we're here. Looking good. Oh, from two fields. One he knows about, and one I will send him a message to let him know about. Mm. Let's go and unload our harvester now, haven't we? Well, the crop's with it, does it? All the crop has withered. Boom. Boom at boom. And the corn's withered, look. Crop destruction. So the starting fields wither quite quickly on this map. Oh, so I'm not going to need to harvest sunflowers then. Because they're, um, they're knackered. <laughs> Do the soybeans as well, which have withered. Field 22 this is, Captain. Field 22.
help of deers completed their task. You know you haven't. Because <laughs> there's still quite a bit of um crop here to harvest. Apart from the withered bit, which the game won't harvest. <laughs> anyway, I'll get to the end of this field. I'm then going to uh, have to take a break because I need to go and have my dinner. Um, I'll let Stevie know some of my findings from this stream that I've done. I'll probably be playing some more on this map over the weekend. I probably won't stream it because I'll save that for the multiplayer stuff that I do with Mr. Helgi. But we'll have a I'll I'll have a good look. Like I say at this map. Try and help Stevie find out find the bugs and the kinks before it gets released to everybody. So, I hope you've enjoyed this live stream and this early look at this new map from Stevie. Uh, it will be released very, very soon to the public. And when it does release to the public, I will be putting out a message to let everybody know when you can get it. Um, obviously, what I would recommend everybody do is follow Stevie's Facebook page where he uploads all his maps and all his mods. That way, when the map does get released, you can download it directly from Stevie's page itself, which will guarantee you get the proper version of the map that hasn't been messed with by anyone, that hasn't been fiddled with or tampered with. It also ensures you get to download the map and the mods from a safe and secure download link. Stevie puts all his mods on a Google Drive account so they can be downloaded without needing to go through any adverts, clicking on any suspect links, without being exposed to viruses or malware or anything like that. Stevie is very good at distributing his mods like that. That's not to say that the scumbag websites out there like modhub.us, Farm Simulator 19 mods and other such websites won't steal the map the minute it releases and the mods and upload them on their own sites with their own links which can cause you to potentially download viruses and other nasty things if you click on them also um, those scumbag websites when they steal the mods they can sometimes mess them up because they oftentimes rename the zip file folders and stuff which in the case of the map especially will definitely break it and cause issues and then unfairly stevie has lots of people say his maps don't work the maps are faulty they're glitchy they're buggy and stuff when it's like well you didn't download it from stevie you downloaded it from somewhere else and they've messed with it also the scumbag websites that do steal the mod and the maps and re-upload them they get the revenue when you click and download the maps and mods, not Stevie. None of the money goes to Stevie, the person who created and did all the hard work. So please, 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 everybody, use Stevie's original links. Use his Facebook page to download the mods. You don't have to have a Facebook account to download the mods from his page. You don't have to be registered and using Facebook. You can download the mods without a Facebook account. But like I say, just please download them from his 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 page directly. Do not use any other websites on the internet to download Stevie's mods because you could be exposing yourself to nasty things and your computer to nasty things. And if you think 
COVID-19 and Corona is quite nasty. Some of the viruses and malware that go around on the internet can be far, far worse. <laughs> but thank you everybody for watching the stream. I've been Siwali, so I will see you all again very soon. Good night for now and goodbye from me.